right now ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the Oregon Trail here on the Lord Master channel and uh, as you can see that um, this is where you load your saves um, so there's only three save slots <laughs> in which I recorded the first two episodes yesterday and now today we're gonna continue on with another but as you can see the date of the save which also tells you of the date of when I was recording since this is still my very first playthrough that I've ever done so let's continue on our journey huh. I mean before we resume there's also a bunch of these other things such as weekly events um, and there's other journeys um, what weekly events let me look that up real quick Contracts. Huh. Remain calm under a deluge of animals in this overwhelming remix of a hunting minigame. Modifiers our animals are much faster. There are three times as many animals, and animals are tiny. And it unlocks three gallery tokens. Hmm. I'm not interested at this time. And uh, my phone is ringing, which is a wireless caller, which don't answer that. And look, we've only done 3% of the journal, and I've only done 6% of the game so far. Um, so, journeyman immigrant. <laughs> and then there's these game stats you can see so far. Um, consumed nearly 400 pounds. Um, collected ne 69 animals. 7 route challenges completed. $669 spent. We only traveled 387 miles so far. Nobody died, and nobody died to dysentery. And only got four achievements so far. And completed 24 events. And only completed one journey. I mean, as much as I would like to spend time to re read, you know, all these, you know, things that can see in the bookmarks, but that would be for another time. So now let's resume this trail. We're about 17% done for this way, so it's still early in the trail. Huh. So again, experience the trials and tribulations of the Oregon Trail. Drop the party, pack your wagon, and set off from Independence for the promise of Oregon. And uh, f and once you accomplish the trail, if we make it all the way to the end, you get to unlock a grandfather clock and the Oregon or bust journey. Let's get back to it of where we were. So we are here at Fort Kearney. And uh, I even had a thought recently about the things I should be doing and things I should not be doing. I mean, I kind of noticed about this one ox that's exhausted. So I thought, well, we should um, rest a day. Resting uh, ends the current day and gives the party a chance to recover stamina. And of course, can reduce bonus illness and injury duration, which helps the party to recover faster. At major settlements and forts, the party can rest uh, the night in the wagon or pay for a boarding and get a better night's rest in a comfortable bed. Lodging is ideal for recovering bonus to stamina and morale. Um, lodging costs $2 per person per night. Uh, no food will be consumed. All right. I'll spend eight dollars for lodgings. That'll get your morale and stamina up for all of you. The rooms are simple but adequate. A welcome change from sleeping on the trail. Sound is sleep in weeks. There you go. And the ox is recovered as well. Good thing I thought of that. Um, as I was thinking about what should we do in, for the next episode. So we're gonna leave Fort Kearney now. You can o we can e go to either Courthouse Rock or to Julesburg, but going to Julesburg will take us to Courthouse Rock anyway. So we'll go to Julesburg. A busy way station for westbound, westward bound immigrants, and a popular location to trade goods with the local peoples. So avoid contracting cholera and avoid contracting dysentery. Alrighty. Well, 
obviously there is no room for fish because you know it's full right now huh. and I'm in no mood to be dumping some good stuff and despite the fact I have some lure but I think I would rather you know gather and the, over there further down is grazing grounds cures animal exhaustion way over there that's a hunting ground for its bison population Ooh. And a Dragoon's Landing, so we gotta go to the Dragoon's Landing, because we have this quest that's related to it. So, let's see if we can pick up some um, herbal remedies. As the party leaves the clearing behind, their minds wander to those who are yet to follow. How many more will brave the trail, following in their footsteps? Well, discard these, because we already bought some new bullets and new toolbox. A labyrinth of wheel ruts, wheel ruts crisscrosses this stretch of trail, carved into the earth by wagons past, and rendered permanent over the years of wind and rain. Walking becomes uh, quickly becomes a chore. The party struggles to keep their footing and must expend more to uh, gu more effort to guide the wagon onward. Trails and tribulations. Got a lot of miles. I didn't read that part. While feeding the oxen, Gus observes that one of the beasts seems lethargic. It's breathing labor. It might be sick. A full day's rest or additional food may well restore its vigor. Walter, you're the farmer. Inspect the ox. Tell her what happened. He believes that the problem is to be a mild form of colic, easily treated with water to drink and a moment to roam freely. In no time, the party is able to continue on. Okay, no issue. Ah, oh my god. Annie lets out an ear splitting cry and the wagon lurches suddenly, tripping over a simple, uh, uh tripping over a simple stone in the soil. Um, Annie falls and finds herself crushed under the unstoppable wagon wheel. She suffered grievous injuries and needs serious, uh, treatment. Ooh. She's lost the composure and the suiting due to the broken arm. Damn it, I wish we could turn around and go back to the fort. The party should stop and treat her, allow her to rest and heal. Utilizing laundrum to relieve the pain and aid healing would be best. It is standard issue in any pack of medicine. However, for an injury this severe, a lot will be required. As uh, we have for medicine. How long is that going to last? 45 days. Yeah, it's 45 days. Or less. And until we get to the next fort. In Fort Laramie. And it takes a large amount of lawn in them. And it takes a few hours to kick in. Eventually her pain eases and she is capable of walking again. It would be a good idea to seek further treatment when possible, however. You know, like, Maggie's our go-to wayfinder, but if I need a second wayfinder in case something ha bad happens to Maggie, I would have gone for Annie. Give me the second. So, now, the party spies a small thicket of shrubs, each covered with small red berries. They've gathered, they have medicinal properties that may prove useful. Berries are delicate and infinitely difficult to harvest. It takes an experienced explorer to gather a large number. We should harvest the berries. <laughs> Again, I would have gone with Annie had she not broken her arm. But I think her bad arm would hinder the gathering of more berries. And um, as far as I'm concerned, maybe there's room for a few more. Especially now that there's more room for medicine. If I wish to buy more. So, go ahead, Maggie. She harvests a moderate number of berries, though she crushes a few in the process and carries a handful back to the wagon. There we go. Okay, we'll head to this way. Undiscovered locale.
just trying to click on this beak. Birds. A grove of wild berries grows near the trail ahead. More berries. Excellent. The party looks at him eagerly, anticipating a delicious change from the food pack of the day. These are raspberries, safe to eat. Um, that's collected by someone with a keen eye. Okay, it's not herbal remedies, but it's food stuff. Go get them. Her wayfinding skill has improved. Whether through pure intuition or practice skill, Maggie collects an abundance of wild berries. 75 foodstuffs, but I don't think we have room for that. So let me see of what we can do here. Actually, I may have to use it up. Um, man, how tired are all of you regarding stamina-wise? For her sake, um, just use one of the coffee beans. This is for the whole party, anyhow. And this hymn book, we've been carrying that for a while. I think we should use that already. Morale's fine. Religious characters of missionaries will gain double. Gus, you survived a broken leg and a good shavun. You should have more composure. Okay, now. Let's move some things. Because, again, this is a, This takes up four. Oh, hell. Uh-uh. Maybe this way. Turn it that way. There you go. Put it up here. And then this here. There you go. You can turn other things, you know. Don't forget about that, Lord Master. Oh, wagon's wearing out. I just moved that there. Come on. <laughs> Hunting is ideally safe for those who have spent time in the wilderness, requiring um, keen shooting skill and the ability to track prey. Um, through challenging environments. Those of low stamina will be unable to carry but back much meat. Who should hunt? And he's got a bad arm, so she's not eligible. What's your shooting skill? If you're somehow better than the rest of them, well then I guess you're gonna be our go-to hunter. Guess not. Come on, Gus, old buddy. And remember, we're going to gain additional meat because we have traps. Uh. Come on. Seventy pounds, but additional meat will be gained because of the traps that will set. Okay, he carries seventy pounds of meat back. That takes a kilo base drive. We receive uh, thirty more pounds of extra meat. And you could spend some time skinning to get the pelts. Do so. Five pelts, which again. If we had a knife, you can gain even more. There we go. Stored more meat in there. And the pelts go here. But there is no room for fish because that takes up even more space. 
So we don't need fish right now. So instead we'll go up there. The grazing grounds. So here's animal exhaustion in case our oxen, you know, gets a little bit of a, you know. And then we'll go find a dragoon. One ox is already exhausted. Wow, I made the right call. Giant. Lost, but oh. The oxen buck and rear, knocking Walter to the ground as the wagon lurches to a stop. Huh. A loud crack rings up another the wagon. Walter picks himself up, clutching his arm in pain. He will be forced to nurse the injury for some time. It appears a twisted stick lies on a trail shaped eerily like a snake is spooking the oxen. The oxen refuse to step near it. The stick is thrown to the grass and Annie tries to calm the oxen down. On expansion, inspection, the, it appears that the wagon sustained some damage in the commotion. While the wagon is still functional at this time, the party should consider repairing the damage before things get worse. Attempt to repair the wagon. Gus, see what you got. He was skill of one, but it increased to two. Okay. Despite Gus's hard work, he fails to improve the condition of the wagon. Crud! Get that fixed. Huh. I have a bad feeling this is going to keep happening. Turn. Put the bullets here. We're gonna have to apply wheel grease just to prevent wagon wear for a few days because it's kicking our ass. And don't forget, this can also do uh, repairs. It's single use, keep that well in mind. So be careful with that. And now Walter's got a broken arm as well. Arms are getting broken in this trail. Party comes across the field of lush grass, perfect for grazing. It's a good place to give the oxen a break if there's time, sir. Well, of course, we got one ox that's um, currently exhausted right now. The oxen spent several hours grazing slowly, enjoying the meal. They seem refreshed and good spirited by the time the party is ready to set out. There may. There have been reports of a member of the Oregon Dragoons in this area. So we have two days to Julesburg and Wagrease will hold out by then. Over there. I see a tree. Maggie spots a young sampling on the side of the trail. If cut and properly stripped, it might serve as a strong wagon tongue, but it will take some time. Who should cut the sapling? It's gonna have to be Maggie. I mean, I can't do any because she's got a bad arm. Tries to cut and strip the sapling, but after a few hours, it's evident it won't hold up to the rigors of being a wagon tongue. The project is abandoned. Well, that's not what I had in mind. What the? They're shooting. Oh. Look. As the sound of the gunshot slowly fades, the party approaches a man on the who seems to be nursing his foot. It's clear that he's badly injured. Without medical attention, he may not survive. How much medicine do we have? Three? Three. Well, give him one. Uh, thanks. Thank you, strangers. My name is Sydney. I was trying to rendezvous with my captain, but my rifle misfired as I was traveling. I shouldn't make the same mistake again. Godspeed to you.
20 miles. Gus winces in pain. His gunshot wound still smarts. But the treatment he received has staved off any infection. I know. You were shot in the torso. It was pretty traumatic. At least uh, to me. I mean, you had a broken leg, then you got shot. Now we got Walter and Annie who have their arms broken. By different circumstances. And Maggie's never really got injured or sick. Well, she was bitten by a snake once. And then Annie cured her. The, the, the tourniquet. Then Annie got the fever as a result of it for a while. And such. A bulky wooden saloon comes to view, surrounded by dozens of tents. This is Julesburg, a famed hub for all manner of trade. Okay, we got a hymn book and a harmonica. Yeah. That's good. Because there's room for those now. <laughs> I mean, our morale is still good. Because, you know, we've been eating a bunch of meat and... We ate all the foodstuffs, all the good raspberries. Gone now. Let's talk to some people. A small camp has been erected, uh, comprised of teepees made from stretched bison skin. This seems to be a temporary Arapaho settlement. Bank gauge. Greetings to you, travelers. What brings you to these parts? The promise of a new life of or in Oregon, no doubt. My associate and I are here on business. There are a lot of opportunity for investment in the West, and the financial stakes are high. Quite right. I'm sure you're busy. But if you learn any of the interesting projects, my colleague and I would certainly like to hear about them. Oh boy. Sam Peppard or uh, Will Thomas? No, oh, Sam... Samuel here wants to, you know, do that little silly wind power gimmick. Uh, of a wagon, I remember yesterday. Um, so I'll be sure to mention it. William and Thomas, I forgot what he wants, but, but give it to Sam. And it's Maggie who speaks. Well, there was a young man we met earlier by the name of Samuel Peppert. He was very enthusiastic about flying machines. Very scientifically minded, if you ask me. Y you think this Samuel Peppert gentleman might be worth looking into? Tell us more about him. Uh, the wind wagon. He <laughs> has idea for it. A wind wagon? Now, that's an interesting idea. It's bold, innovative, just the sort of thing we're looking for. The cost of maintaining a team of oxen is not inconsiderable, and there is plenty of wind on the prairie. Yes, the more I think about it, the more I like it. I think you're right. This wind wagon idea might be just the ticket we need. We should contact the bank right away. Your assistance is greatly appreciated, friends. Perhaps we'll see each other again. Let's talk to more. Robberies along the stagecoach lines have been up ever since Jules Binney was appointed the manager of the station. Some say it's a coincidence, but I find that hard to believe. This place has changed in recent years. So many people come by this way, it was only a matter of time until someone built a permanent establishment, I suppose. Lots of folks pass through here on their way to California, though it's rarer to see those who are heading to Oregon, though it's rarer to see those who are heading to Oregon. Best take the chance to stock up on supplies. One more. Rose Jackson, that one's got a last name. Dr. Allen was going to leave me behind. Can you believe it? Well, I told him that I was coming no matter what the law says, even if I have to hide in the box in the whole six months. Say, you won't tell anyone you saw me, will you?
Oh, there is a store here. I didn't know. Okay, I mean, that's good to know. But I can tell you this, so... Um, is there a room for uh, a view wagon? Is there room for a toolbox? Yeah. <laughs> because that wagon was kicking my ass earlier. Uh, the wagon is getting its ass kicked, I should say. So just give me one toolbox and I'll be out of here. There's n I don't think there's any urgent need for any more of these. Not even spare parts. Which we haven't had that yet, quite fortunately. So. Yeah. Just, here's ten dollars. Just some more tools. And there is services here. Services. Okay. Uh, we got two people who have a bad... Who's got a battered arm. Oh god, 30 each. Jiminy Christmas. One second. I'll be back. Just in case if anybody's willing to trade money. Yeah, I'll be back. Don't worry. Is anybody willing to trade money? Or at least sell them? Well, I know that there are no river crossings ahead, so I would sell the pelts. Huh. Let's haggle. Increase the price. Your arm may be broke, but not your wit. They'll sell all five. Or thirty. Those. There you go. Thirty dollars. Huh. Now anything else? Clothes, boots, flour. There's room for extra clothes, but... Hmm. Go again, Annie. Uh, I would not give away medicine, but I'll trade away some bullets. Um, which, again, even if I don't kill much animals, I still got a few traps to get some more meat. So, a few cloves just to add to the wagon is always nice. So, okay. Now, fix their arms. No need to restore the health. We could do that, um... Unless it gets hurt more, but... Who knows? As I said, I just want you to fix their arms. No need to restore their health. Unless it's absolutely necessary. Because that's what the medicines are for. And, uh, what's your stamina? Okay, we'll rest here for a day. And the wagon bed is arranged to a cozy sleeping space as possible and the party settles down for a night. Too bad there's no lodgings here at a place like this. Good enough. If you get tired more, we're gonna start brewing some coffee. Since we passed a day, I was about to say, has anything changed? More traps. How much traps can you hold in this space? Because I like having them around. Like, how much do. No way. Wheel grease is always good. Mm-mm. And, uh... Well, there's always more room for coffee, so maybe... Get coffee? No. Okay. Then we'll take our leave, then.
going to Courthouse Rock. A pair of sandstone outcrops resembling the ruins of an ancient castle or courthouse. Restore Annie's health. Okay, we can get that for the flower. Um, and also collect herbal remedies if you see them on a the map. Which will give us money. And there it is. Collect herbal remedies. So we'll have to travel here and after that... Well, I guess it's just going to be more grazing then. The planes stretch out ahead of the party. The commotion of Julesburg, a rapidly fading memory. A lot can happen out in this trail. Just hope nobody gets hurt, shot, died, or anything like that. That would... Oh, howdy there. I didn't think I would run into folks this far out. I'm Elena. Uh, if Elena, Elena, if you were to forget, if you were to forget that you saw me, I'd be much obliged. Here's a small gift to the set of your sonnets. Best of luck on the trail. She gave me twenty dollars. Nice. One second. Maggie begins to scratch her stomach furiously. Seems to have been by the many mites hiding in the grass along the trail. This affliction can be eased by placing bacon grease on the irritated area, but doing so would use some of the stored meat. There you go. She places the bacon grease on the worst of the bites. The fatty juices eases our it itchiness considerably. She is comfortable once more. As I said, let's just hope nothing unpredictable happens. Alright. You know what to do. If you can get it up to six, well then I'm happy with that. Because I would love to start working on Annie's wave fighting. As Maggie harvests an enormous number of berries, carrying a back by the armful. Oh, Maggie falls, falling face first onto the ground, crushing some of the berries she managed to gather. No worry, it's sufficient. Although, we would have loved to collect more. Seven, that means you can hold up to ten remedies in this space. Holy crud. You know what? Use one right now. Use some. Back up to full health, all of you. Need an alternative to be using a medicine all the damn time. Remember how much space that fish takes? About six. So, what's, what's the hygiene of everybody? Not... Not this down enough. Skip the fish. Go to grazing grounds. Hey, look. <laughs> Greetings, travelers. My name is uh, Baywatchish. It's a pleasure to meet you. We're ill-equipped for trade, but perhaps we could still Make an exchange, if you are willing. We must reserve many of our goods for ourselves, but I will present what we are willing to part with. If you have suitable things to trade, then we can make a deal. Five blankets, meat, fish traps, pelts. What's the purpose of the blanket? There's just another way to deal with hygiene, I think. But I know pelts is pretty important. So I, I guess we'd be willing to trade six pelts for a number of things. What would you consider fair? Do we have room for that? Yes. Yes, we do if you move the beans this way. Pelts here. Pelts there. Yeah. I can see that. Thirty dollars for six pelts, and then sell the pelts when we get to the next fort. 
order anyone, then make some money back. Yeah. Fair trade. <laughs> Thank you for your business, Charles. We planned to... Oh, and plus one. Um, we planned to depart soon. Was there anything else before we leave? Ask about their destination. We're all going. I'm representing my village at the signing of the Horse Creek Treaty. We are traveling at our now. It is not a long journey, but our primary purpose is to not to trade, so we are ill-equipped to meet the hungry travelers on the road. We are eager for the signing to take place. I believe it is a good opportunity to ensure that our hunting territories are protected, and perhaps we can also repair our relationship with those from the east. There are rumors that the United States will not honor their promises to us, but I believe that they will. A treaty is their word, their way of committing to it. I have met with the man for proposing the treaty before. He confers often with James Beckworth, a man in my village. Thomas Fitzpatrick is his name. He's an honorable sort, friend of many peoples. I do not expect that he tends to betray his honor. Tell me about James Beckworth. I've heard of that name before. He's a mountain man, trailblazer, right? Have you heard of Beckworth? Do not believe everything he says. He considers himself as the chief of the crow people, but he is no such thing. If there is nothing else, then I bid you safe travels, friends. Oh, crud. That's the wheel. They didn't say the wheel broke. It's a part of the wagon that broke. God dog it. It's just one spot anyhow. Gently now. The group notices the flower supplies are getting low. We should bake some hardtack. The party groans at the suggestion. The hardtack will stretch the supplies far longer, but it tastes miserable. What should be done? You know, um, one second. We're going to get some more flour, and you say we're going to be low on flour? Give it a go ahead. Um, cook 45 flour to make 67 hardtack. The flour is baked and produces a number of hard, dry biscuits. We don't need that much. I would discard that. Or trade it off to somebody else. It can reduce morale if we happen to run out of meat and flour. First place we get to, trade that off. If there's a chance that he says, hey, I'll give you some hard tack if I want one of your things. How are the oxen doing? They're doing all right. I reckon that we push on instead of resting. Party pushes on past the foliage, maybe another time. Oh my god! A loud crack uh, sounds out as the wagon runs over a sharp, heavy rock. One of the wheels has been warped by the impact. The wheel could be repaired manually, but it'll take some time. Entirely replacing the wheel would be much quicker. Fix that! Huh. Any? I don't know if you have the skills for it, but at least give you a try. So, at least you know everybody's carpentry skill. One. Crud. After a long and vexatious struggle, Annie returns to wield to working order. What a bother. Holy shit. I mean, the wheel's fixed, but... Severe damage done to it. Mm. God, dog it, that hurt. Well, get the fixin'. And we're gonna have to use that part of that wheel too to fix it. So it's like we just replaced the whole wheel anyway. 
That was painful. At least there's a little more space now. So yeah, now I know the benefits of spare parts. All the more reasons why to have wagon grease. Wheel grease. So, nobody's got good carpentry skills except maybe Maggie. If she keeps working on it, then it'll improve upon with time. Are those ancient stones of a ruined castle jutting from the earth? No. They are the courthouse and jail rocks. Noted landmarks of decidedly natural origin. Couldn't get the money, but we got the flower. Which, that means, uh, the flower is full, but turn that upside down. Move it. And then there. A few travelers mill about the base of the rocks, taking the opportunity to rest in the shade. They may have valuable knowledge. You'll find Chimney Rock not too far to the west of here. You could probably even see it from here on a clear day. And there's... Yeah. Time was we called this place McFarland's Castle. Up close, it resembles no such thing. But from afar, one might swear it was some grand abandoned fortress. Courthouse Rock is only the bigger of those two. On the right, the smaller fella is called Jail Rock. I reckon saying Courthouse to Jail Rocks every time strikes folks as a mite too loquacious. Let's try it. Well, we could sell the pelts and get the money. Since there's no river crossings nearby as far as the eye could see. Ugh, no good this time. Sell it anyway. Gotta make some space. Wheel grease. Jiminy Christmas, as much as I would like to give away all that flour, but need to haggle it down. Try again. Alright. Be trading away 192 flour, which, oh boy, oh dear. Okay, maybe we should uh, reconsider that because um, I'll be trading away nearly all the flour. Then, then all the meat's gonna be gone, and then you're gonna start eating hardtack, which nobody likes this stuff, but prevents starvation nonetheless. I mean, you're going to be trading away half the food for this, so... You know what? This is an unpopular decision. We're going to lower the rations. And I am going to trade that away because wagon maintenance is more important. I'm taking a gamble here. I just want to prevent... Oh. Too many prisons. I just want to prevent, you know, any more wagon breakage because... We don't have any toolboxes, um, even if I were to get some of that off of the other oh, 13 bolts. Okay, maybe I can. I mean, again, I'm not going to be doing much of shooting. That's what traps are for. Let's see too if you can lower it. Right. Okay, I'll give you 11 bullets for 14... Oh, 14... <laughs> 4 toolboxes. If only I had 14 toolboxes... Well, that means I'll be dumping some more crap, and then I'll be fixing that wagon in tip-top shape, and it will always be in tip-top shape. Again, this is probably an unpopular move on my end. Dumping a bunch of food in the name of wagon maintenance. And, uh, additionally, brew some coffee, because I know 
some of y'all's stamina is getting lowered. Even though I would have rested, but apply that right now. So yes, some of you are going to be eating hardtack now, and you ain't going to like it. But we got a few harmonicas, so we're just going to keep on going then. Hopefully you've got to find opportunities to hunt and fish. Because we'll be heading to Chimney Rock next. A tall sandstone rock formation that can be seen for miles around. A notable landmark of the westward migration. It's about 50 miles away. So avoid contracting dysentery. That's easy. And restore her hygiene for her medicine. You got it. Oh, and we don't know either of these paths, so take either one, so go to here. The party trundles westward, far on the horizon, a silhouette of a trail. A thin spire becomes barely visible. Alright, stop, stop. Change clothes. Got the hygiene done. When we arrive, we're gonna get another medicine. Oh, and just in time too, rain just came down. Rain, great. The looming clouds will last give out. Shower the wagon in a constant blanket of rain. Yeah, the morale goes down as the mood is somber as the wagon wheels slog over to the muddy ground. At last the rain clears and the sun returns to the trail. No, we shouldn't need to pay anything. We are official delegates of the United States Army. You must let us through. Matawili. You wish to travel across our land, so you must pay the toll. There are no exceptions for anyone, especially not for those from the east. Ah, greetings, travelers. My name is Mata Uyuhi. I've been chosen to represent this party of Lakota. Please understand that you are entering our land. If you wish to continue, you will be required to pay the toll as well. You there, travelers. Perhaps you can explain to this gentleman that we're on our way to sign a treaty for his benefit. By order of Congress, there's no need for a toll. Um, let me speak to Mato Iuhi first. You wish to speak on the matter of the soldiers? If they want to cross these lands, then they must respect our customs. It's simple as that. The purpose of their travel does not matter. Many parties will be present for the treaty signing, including mine. None are exempt from paying the toll. I r must remind you that the Wasichu travelers are taken mu have taken much from this land already. Now I must admit, my village believes that the United States has much to answer for. We have seen the damage they've done. They built Fort Laramie on our land without permission. I ask you, can their treaty repair that? They have shown no compensation for their, exo for their existing harm. A treaty signing like a treaty signing like this is the beginning of a relationship. The United States has yet to show their spirit towards maintaining that relationship. He appears to be firmly set on disallowing the passage of the soldiers without a toll. The US soldier also appears firmly set in his views. Something that should be done before the situation escalates into a conflict. Let me talk to the soldier. Ah, if I may cut in, I'm Thomas Fitzpatrick, the man responsible for organizing the upcoming treaty signing. These soldiers have been assigned to me by the military for my protection. The Treaty of Fort Laramie is sure to be an historic milestone. Sir, please, this is a government operation. Allow me to clarify the situation for these travelers. The Lakota are not allowing us passage to Fort Laramie without paying at all. I've not been authorized to make such a payment. And, if I may speak candidly, I do not believe we should have had to. Requesting a toll to cross these lands may well limit access to the treaty signing. They speak of the importance that everyone's input plays into this. Yet some as, are being turned away just because they can't afford it. Travel through these lands must be free from conflict, free from any burdens. Only then we can proceed at peace. 
the treaty will provide more than enough composition, uh, compensation uh, for, for this right of way. So, why should we pay a toll? Okay. Outside of Mato Yohi, he's reasonable in my eyes. Convincing the United States soldiers to pay the toll will be difficult. Who should attempt to convince them? Why? Annie. You know, when it comes to, you know, finance, she's the banker. She knows anything about tolls. I understand your argument. I certainly don't wish for conflict with the Lakota. But still, this puts us in a very difficult position. Very well. We do value the Lakota's attendance at this treaty. I will pay the toll if it ensure future good relations. I would implore you to attend the signing of the treaty. We could always use more witnesses. That someone with your experience would be extremely valuable. I must thank you for your assistance, friends. We cannot know how that situation may have unfolded without your presence. Is there anything else you want to know before we move on? Do ask me about the um, treaty here. Truth be told, I'm still a little unsure about it. This is not the first treaty our people have signed, and yet the flow of settlers has only increased since I was young. The United States does not honor its promises, a pattern repeated time and time again. I cannot speak for all of my people, but I will consider signing this treaty. However, I will not be surprised when it isn't on it. If there is nothing else, then I say farewell, travelers. I trust that we'll see you all at the signing. If not, then safe travels. Well done. Again, rationing a little. Who knows what else we're going to be dealing with. Oh, you see what I see? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Samuel Peppert. I am delighted that you could be here today to witness history. I present you my latest invention, the Wind Wagon, a marvel of modern science and engineering, capable of transporting people and goods by wind power alone. This is certainly the future of transportation on the overland trails. Of course, none of this would have been possible without you, my friends. Your interest and advice were instrumental in making my project a reality. I humbly thank you for bringing my idea to the attention of these fine bank representatives. Is there anything you'd like to ask before I begin the demonstration? What should the party say? Hmm. Let's ask about the future. The wind wagon is only the first of many inventions I intend to build, but my ambitions are not limited to the realm of science and engineering. I would very much like to start a family one day and to run my very own business. Indeed, can there be any greater accomplishment for a man? Well, let's see it. Then, without further, any further ado, I shall release the brakes and set sail. Sam has prepares the, for the wagon's first voyage. Sail on! Oh! <laughs> well, that didn't go according to plan, but science rarely does. But I can assure you that this is only a minor setback. After all, what are mistakes if not opportunities to learn? The tornado has done, ev has even done most of the work of disassembling the wagon, so I can begin the redesign process us immediately. I assume everyone's on board. Well, those two bankers just walked away, so it indicates otherwise. So, the quest is complete. So now you've unlocked the wind wagon, which you can purchase at the store, I believe. I don't know how much space it will have. Is this a campsite? 
Mm -hmm. This campsite has been set up with wash basins and bathtubs to make use of the nearby spring. It's a great opportunity to restore hygiene, though. It may take some time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people need to be washed. Except Maggie, who likes... Who's, which, she's neat. She loves the adventure, but she likes to keep herself tidy. So, let's set up camp. The party can either spend some time cleaning themselves or learning more about each other. Wash. Just wash. As much as I like to tell a story, but washing is a little more important. Maggie's hygiene goes up, obviously. No, party hygiene's up and the morale up. Because, of course, because she's neat. Because uh, she's that kind of person. The party spent some time uh, thoroughly scrubbing themselves. Be glad to free of the muck and grime that comes within the grueling travel. We are in need of food because they're not going to be too pleased when they're going to start eating hardtack. Because they don't like that kind of crap, but it keeps us alive and tripping over a small bump in a rough ground. Annie finds herself in the dust. A little sore, she picks herself up and keeps walking. Mm. Alright, we are arriving at Chimney Rock, as far as the eye can see. A towering stone spire erupts from the earth ahead. At its base is a large mound, as though the massive pillar uh, was once a single mound, now sculpted to a fine point. This is Chimney Rock, one of the trail's most storied landmarks. There you go. Got these two. Which, which there's plenty of harmonicas to have if we wish to restore morale. Plus we're about to lose the meat and the uh, flour. We really gotta go hunting if the opportunity presents itself further down the line. But in the meantime, several settlers are gathered by the foot of Chimney Rock, though the majority are too busy glancing upwards to notice the wagon. Alonzo Delano. <laughs> About noon yesterday, we came to the side of Chimney Rock, looming up in the distance like the lofty tower of some town. We did not tire gazing on it. It was about 20 miles from us. We stayed inside till we reached it today. Antrobrecca Sims. I hear terrible stories about wagon parties running out of food before Oregon and a whole party starving to death. We must check our supplies often. We might not get there as soon as we think. Always plan for the worst, I say. Someone behind. Chimney Rock by Moonlight is awfully sublime. Many Lakota came to our wagon of all sorts of goods to trade. We got plenty of fish and some fine pairs of moccasins. It's a good thing I know the sign language that everyone uses for trade. Well, let's talk trade then. Hey, got any food? No? What would I like to have? Got the medicine. Oh. Uh, how many bullets do we have again? Sixteen. This may sound a little ridiculous, but... Ooh, no, no, no. <laughs> Five toolboxes sounds a little much. Way much, yeah. Should we sacrifice this one medicine that we just earned? Or that... Oh, that, the Drew Goon went down, yeah. See to it. Nope. No, no joy. No, then. No toolboxes like to have some what in God's name try again I better start increasing Maggie's wit I better start letting her instead of having to rely on any all the time okay this one dragoon medallion because they say that you could trade that off for more medicine 
It's always nice to have uh, more medicine with you. So, thank you very much. How's uh, stamina? Relatively good. Keep moving. No need to rest here. Fort Laramie is ahead. Once we arrive at Fort Laramie, I will end this video. It's about 70 miles, 75 miles away. Constructed at the confluence of the two rivers near a natural ford, Fort Laramie offers respite and supplies for immigrants. So, if you can collect some herbal remedies, you gain $50. And restore Annie's health, we'll get some more flour. Oh, good. Just what we need. Oh, even better. Well, actually, no. You need the herbal remedies. You may never know we'll screw up again. So. And this is just for stamina. This is unknown. Got no room for fish. As much as I would like to have some fish. So. Let's go gather some herbs. Where Chimney Rock once stood as a guiding beacon. Now lies before the party, but the endless plane. Well, there goes the meat. Here. We're gonna get some more flour. If once we arrive at the frickin', you know, frick. <laughs> Yeah, morale's starting to go down. I may start playing some harmonicas very soon. Let me see coyotes. Annie spies a cluster of mushrooms protruding from dust on the trail sign. What is that? Mushrooms are vibrant yellow with strange funnel like shape that curves at its edge, like a flower. They give off a soft scent of apricots. They may be edible. Are you sure about that? One, the one who inspects the mushrooms should have a keen eye and the knowledge of the natural world. Who should inspect the mushrooms? The adventurer, of course. Hmm. Nope. I'm not sure exactly what these mushrooms are, but the signs are probably dangerous. Just leaving them behind. Could have been an opportunity for foodstuffs. That will not do. Daddy, look, it's the people from before. Are you going to invite them to my birthday party? We'll see, sweetheart. Hello there, travelers. It's unusual that we meet again. Perhaps it's divine intervention, or simply luck. Whatever the case, it's good to see our saviors once again. Say, I wonder if you might do us a favor. I know it's asking a lot of you, but we're already in your depth. Well, would you like to help us make a birthday present for little Mary? She'll be five years old this year, but the present we brought for her went missing while we were stranded. Jane would like to make her a doll, but is having trouble on deciding the pattern. We should help design little Mary's doll. I would say Gus because he's kind. If I um, remember correctly. P is for party. I just remember that hotkey. He may be a pessimist, but he's kind. So, he's a nice guy. Let's see if it works. After a few hours of sewing, Gus said Jane finishing making a doll for little Mary. The doll looks very it looked like a very friendly young lady that Gus used to know. Well, now, this is a charming little thing you've made. Little Mary will be over the moon when she sees it. You have my thanks once again, travelers. I do hope we'll see each other again in the future. If your morale starts going down again, start using that harmonica. But first, go harvest them. I would like to see it go up to six and then start working on Annie's wayfinding. Don't trip. Good. So 
So we're going to get the flower. And there's no doubt that we're going to get some more money after this. Because right now we have $84 and about to make big cash. An ox is an exhausted. How many toolboxes do we have again? Four. Here comes some more. You know what to do. Love making her active. There we go. Maximum wave fighting. <laughs> so now I'm going to start working on Annie's wave fighting. As long as she doesn't get herself hurt or anything like that. Oh, and she also notices a handful of old unfired bullets. Well, be careful. Remember that one time and Gus got shot by... Well, it, it's the fault of the rifle, not the cartridge. So nine bullets that she just scattered. That seems salvageable. And there's two herbal remedies. No room for fish. Stamina, we can do. This is undiscovered. We'll see what it is. Play the harmonica. Single use. Just gonna get y'all's up a little more. We'll get some more flowers soon. Ugh. That's a wagon condition of just one, not two. Okay, that's fine. Look of here. Is this what I think it is? Ah, greetings once again, travelers. I hope your journey is proceeding well. Once again, you have my sincerest thanks for diffusing that situation for me. Thanks to your efforts, the Lakota are in attendance for the signing. We selected a chief by the name of Mato Yohi to sign. Yes, indeed, the same man you met previously. Now, the signing will take place soon. Most parties have already arrived. If you wish to speak with me or any of the others, there is time for questions. Though we should not dally for long. Talk to you first, because you're talking to me right now. I'm excited for this treaty. It's been a long journey getting here. I've been a guide on the Oregon Trail for many years. I understand the hardships of the trail, not to mention the strife that the local tribes can cause. The folks in Washington, D.C. don't understand the area as well as I do. They haven't lived on the west, on the plains. It took quite some time to convince them that this treaty was worth it. But here we are. This will be the largest gathering of Plains tribes in history. Once signed, this treaty will ensure a new era of peaceful travel for everyone in the West. So yes, many different people of different cultures and, and locales mill about waiting for the signing ceremony to begin. Hello once again, friends. I hope you traveled well since the last time we met. I must admit, I find myself interested in what will transpire here today. This is a gathering of so many different nations. We have made, we have all made the journey to be here and make this possible. I hope Fitz, Fitzpatrick's ideals will win over the others here. I trust in his intentions, but it wouldn't be the first time the uh, the Bajtashihile has failed to make a meaningful change. No matter. We could discuss this further once the treaty has been signed. Hey, Black Beaver. Hello again, friends. I trust you kept yourselves safe. I hope your journey has been more fortuitous than ours. You'll have to forgive us for seeming uh, a bit less friendly than the last time we went. Regrettably, tragedy has befallen my family. Do you remember my father? He passed away on our journey here. It's not your fault, I assure you. He's been sick for quite some time. It's been a long journey from home. Perhaps we could talk more after the signing. Mato Yogi. So, we meet again, travelers. I'm glad to see that you're here. I am, however, a little confused. Mr. Fitzpatrick and all the soldiers have chosen me as the representative for all Lakota. Perhaps because I made an impression on them during our previous encounter. I will consider signing the treaty, 
So long as it recognizes Lakota rights over the land and compensates us for the damages caused by the Washichu travelers, then it's beneficial to all parties. But please, let Mr. Fitzpatrick know that I can't represent all Lakota. I can only speak for my own party. Let's proceed with the signing. Very well. If there is nothing else, then I would ask that you wait for the signing to begin. It should start shortly. So please do entertain yourselves while I get prepared. Welcome, everyone. Today is an historic day, marking the signing of the Treaty of Fort Laramie. Today we have many representatives from the Lakota, Crow, Arapaho, Cheyenne, um, Asiniboine, Mandan, Hadatsa, Shoshone, and Arikara Nations. Truly, no greater council of Indian tribes has ever been assembled. We do not come to you as traders. We do not want your land, horses, robes, or anything else you have. We have come to advise with you and to make a treaty with you for allowing the, the right of free passage for my people and the right to form roads and establish military posts. The United States will compensate the people of the plains for 50 years from this date. By attending today, all parties have shown their intent to sign and ratify this treaty. Please step forward, chiefs and representatives. Sign this treaty and let us smoke and begin a new era of peace between all our peoples. They signed and shook hands. It is finished. The treaty has been ratified by all in attendance. Come, let us all celebrate the new peace together. Well, <laughs> two hours later. Well, that was certainly was exciting. You witnessed history, my friends. Now, I'm afraid we must part ways. I'm to head back to Washington, D.C. with the appointed representatives of the nations. There is still much work to be done talk about the signing. I'm glad that the entire council was present uh, for this. I think today will truly mark a turning point for all Indian relations of the future. All of the Plains Nations wish this is just as much as we do. It's curious that the Lakota weren't sure about who to put forward as their leader. Apparently that's not how their politics work. Well then, I shall be off to Washington DC. May we meet again in the future my friends. Curious indeed, friends. I have heard much in my role as interpreter since I arrived from, here, from many different peoples. Fitzpatrick is certainly fond of speaking, but what about listening? Perhaps I'm speaking out of turn, but if it does not understand how the Lakota are organized, then what else he might have misunderstood? I'm sorry, but I'm rambling again. Farewell, my friends. I hope to see you again someday. Quest is complete. Well, we still got some time till we get to Fort Laramie. Hognose snake. The party approaches a dilapidated, wind-blown wagon. While the long, abandoned wagon looks uh, it might collapse at any moment, some parts may be salvageable. The wagon rolls precariously. It may be possible to retrieve useful materials, but each attempt comes with a risk of the wagon collapsing. Take the wheel. She attempt to take the wheel. I guess it's going to be you, Maggie. You're the best covered out of all of us. Only a single wheel is in acceptable condition for use. It slips free from the wagon and tumbles into the dirt as the uh, wagon shudders softly. One second. Well, there goes all the flour. We are going to be eating hardtack from now on. Ah. <laughs> I got it. Now, take the axle. Do it again. I don't want to tire you too much. The axle is wrestled to the wagon's husk with some effort. 
without the axle to lean on, the front of the wagon shifts forward slightly. Don't want to tire you too much, so that means, uh... This is how much space it takes. I'll put that here. This takes up four slots. Oh, hell. One second, please. Hang on. Make some adjustments. I don't know where the hell you're going. There we go. That should be... Well, move the hard tack and then you got it. You, need, you got room for a tongue. Let's go take that tongue too. Walter, you do it. As Walter moves to retrieve the item to finally... The wagon finally gives away to the intrusion. It's decrepit shell splintering into the dust. There's nothing left to take. One second. Mm. Yeah, you're eating that crap. I just heard something banging outside. I think that was thunder. Oh, we'll end the recording soon, as soon as we arrive there. Either that or it's the wind. Okay, now I remember what I was supposed to do. Play the harmonica. Get the morale up, please. Because I hate to see them, you know, down like this because we're eating that heart attack crap. That means we're going to have to go buy some food. Yeah, there is a storm here. I just checked the radar on my phone. So, we are arriving at Fort Laramie, and then that will be the... What the... Um, oh, wait, it's, it's exhaustion. Um, okay, don't worry. We're about to arrive at the fort. <laughs> just hang on, Maggie. Just hang on. We're going to arrive at the fort. And, uh, we're going to end this episode right here, right now. The large walled settlement stands before the wagon. This is Fort Laramie, one of the principal supply routes along the Oregon Trail. You arrive at the fort, would you like to heal? Um, there's nobody to heal, but I guess Maggie, just by virtue of exhaustion. Locked a new journey. Kaboom. Crisscross, no, cross the harsh desert. Then a pursuit of riches as the group attempts to carry as much ammunition to Fort Hall as possible before it explodes. Successful completion unlocks the harmonica item and the carpenter class. We got the money and we got the flower. No more hard tack for now. Alrighty. So, that'll be the end of this episode here. As, um, we have arrived at Fort Laramie here. Um... We traveled over 19 days, bringing the total of 43 for now. Seven out of eight of the route challenges. So, so we'll end this episode right now. So in the next episode, we're going to go on another leg of the uh, journey and wait for this storm to clear of what's going on right now here. The surprise storm, and I just saw that lightning bolt just now. Do you hear that? Picking up on the headset? That was thunder. So... So we'll see you in the next episode. But until then, so long for now.